If you've been waiting to sew a zipper fly until someone showed you the easiest way ever, well, you can stop waiting because that day is today. I've got the easiest, easiest, easiest fly zipper tutorial on the planet. You're going to be able to sew it with your eyes closed once you do it a few times. Much easier than other methods I've shown you before. Look at this beautiful zipper. Gorgeous. It'll be worth your while. I promise. Hi, my name's Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I have some limitless sewing for you today because this fly zipper tutorial that I'm going to show you is something that you can create for yourself and add on to styles that might not have a zipper front. You might want to add that in there. Maybe the pattern you're sewing has a different zipper tutorial that seems a bit too complicated for you maybe and that's why you've been putting off sewing maybe denim skirts, maybe jeans, maybe some nice linen pants. Up to this point I've been really really happy and satisfied sewing different types of zipper flies. You know on jeans, different patterns I've used, I've seen so many different techniques and over time I developed one that I really like for myself and it's based on patterns that have your front pieces here separately. There's nothing added onto that center front, it's just straight and this is for skirts and pants and you have separate facing pieces that you interface and you sew onto these center fronts. Maybe you've already sewn zipper flies this way and I will leave you in the description box some of the videos I've created already showing this method that I've sort of simplified taking all different types of methods and just created something nice for you. Now there's something even easier than that because with the way I'm going to show you now you don't need separate facing pieces to sew onto your center fronts to be able to sew this metal zipper or whatever type of zipper you're sewing. These facings are integrated into the front, either of a skirt or a pant. And you might see this technique in some patterns. I know the Ginger Jeans from Closet Core has this technique, the Ames Jeans from Cashmerette. Another example are many of the pants designed by Each to Stitch, the Eddie Stone Jeans. I know that this method is used a lot by Kenneth from Each to Stitch. And this is when I started sewing it for the first time. And at first it took a little getting used to, changing the technique I'd been using in the past. But once I did it a few times, I think this one could be super easy. Now I'm not showing you exactly like I've seen it in the Each to Stitch patterns. I've made a few modifications just to make it easier for you to see how it's done and you'll see how easy it is, I am promising you. I want a really short introduction so we can get onto it. At first I'm going to show you how you can create a little template and it's very easy, don't think it's hard and you can put that away and use that for the different patterns where you want to sew a fly zipper. Maybe your pattern doesn't have it or maybe your pattern does have another type of tutorial. Maybe it does have the type that has separate facings. In that case you can put all those little extra pattern pieces aside and use what I'm going to show you to put onto your pattern and in the end it's going to turn out way way easier. So let's see. Don't you think this is starting to wear me? This can be the center front of any skirt or any pant. It doesn't matter what seam allowance you're using. Just make sure you draw the seam allowance of the pattern that you're using. It could be 3 eighths, it could be a half an inch, it could be 5 eighths. It doesn't really matter what it is, just draw it on there. And now on a separate piece of paper, I've created a template that will be added onto here so we can have an integrated facing here instead of having separate pattern pieces to construct the zipper and it just makes everything so much faster, much more simple. So I have my template here. The red line that you see there is what is going to be placed on top of the seam allowance line that we have underneath. I can see through my white paper here, you can see the line there, that is where I'm going to align this right there. And then you can use this template onto any pattern you have, it doesn't matter what seam allowance it has. Just align that red line onto the seam allowance line that you have underneath of your pattern, whatever seam allowance it could be. Now from this red line over here, I drew a line that is one and three quarters of an inch wide. So that's the width right there, one and three quarters. And now from the top down to that red line, that is where we're going to sew up to. It really depends on the length of your zipper and your preference. I have these, for example, this one's longer than the other one. I tend to favor shorter zippers, just personal preference. I am going to be sewing something that needs a black zipper, so I'm going to take these measurements. So if I place this zipper right here, you can see that my red mark is matching right under this zipper stop. And in my case, this is from the top here to here, six and a half inches. Then I've gone ahead and added a further three quarters of an inch. 
so the total length from here to there is seven and a quarter but you know you can make this longer if I wanted to use this zipper for example I would leave the zipper stop a little below because we need seam allowance to put on the waistband and things you can see that the zipper stop finishes below this so I would just extend this and make it longer bring this down do the red line just under the stop and then do the curve a little lower than this so this is just an example you can customize to the zipper that you have what length this facing could have for you this is what's going to work for me from the top down six and a half inches and then an extra three quarters and then I just did this little curve with a with a ruler one of these edges he helped me make this curve right there so that it's nice and neat and this is going to be my template that I'm going to use for any anything that I want so I'm just going to cut out this curve leave a little excess here and cut at the top I'm going to keep this in a safe place and I can use it over and over just aligning that red line on top of the seam allowance line or the seam line right there all I would do to cut my pattern piece now is just pin this on and now this would be my front piece and it would have this included like that really easy this little notch is something that you would want to mark on your fabric and also it's optional depending on how lightweight your fabric is you would want to interface this area here so you would need to cut with this shape some interfacing to fuse onto these integrated facings right here if i was working with a heavyweight denim or something just already really structured like a cotton twill or something i might not interface this it is going to be a decision i make based on the fabric choice but if it's a linen i would want to interface if it's a lighter cotton or a chambray a light denim i probably would want to interface this area now the other pattern piece that we need to make is the shield and it's extremely easy because you use the same piece that we've created there all I did here was copy it the exact same and on this shorter edge not the longer edge I put it on the fold on the paper so I have this right there so basically just take take a paper fold it in half put it there on the edge the fold and trace this out and you're gonna have your shield you just need to cut out one of these pieces that's it and i'm going to show you how you can do this on pants also because this is going to work on pants and it's also going to work on a skirt i've also drawn the seam allowance here for this crotch curve and i'm going to do the exact same thing i did with my skirt i'm going to take my template and place that red line right on top of that seam line right there and just pin it in place and then this would be my front pattern piece for these pants same as i did with the skirt right there it would just be an extended piece both of the pattern pieces for the front would already have this piece of fabric there and then this would be the area that you would need to interface so that's all it's really really simple you can create one of these in a couple of minutes but just as an extra if you're working with a crotch curve just be careful that your zipper is not too long that it doesn't compromise this curve here i like to keep zippers just in this straight edge and not go off into this curve so for a pant, I wouldn't really want to use a zipper longer than this. I, would, I think this is the maximum length I would want to use. It's different with a skirt because the seam just goes straight down. So you could have a longer zipper if you really wanted. This is the shield for the zipper and we'll get this ready and out of the way. Then we can just put it aside and work on the actual zipper. I'm using just a cotton. So because it is a lightweight fabric, I did interface it. You can see the interface thing is fused on there. So I'm just going to fold this lengthwise right sides together. I'm going to sew this long end, pivot there and then sew this little curve with a quarter of an inch and then flip this all right sides out. Another alternative that you can do is just sew this little bit, this little curve and then flip it right sides out. So what I mean by that is when you sew this little curve and you flip it, the bottom edge will be nice and finished like that and then this that's the long edge that you just search and it's still nice and neat inside but in this case i'm going to sew the whole thing i mean flipping it right sides out is annoying it's not something that gets done really fast and really easy but i think it's worth it to have something really extra nice inside i'm using my quarter inch presser foot as always to help me get an accurate seam allowance In this curve I'm gonna just nip away a few notches little triangles to reduce the bulk down there and it's just nicer when there's a little curved seam like this that you want to turn and you know it's this is not fun I mean it's not fun at all but 
it's not a humongous piece it's not impossible to do <laughs> okay there it's turned right sides out you can see that long seam and at the bottom it's finished cleanly so just give it a good press and leave that aside this is the center front of the skirt this shape that you see there is what you saw me add on like an integrated facing I did decide to interface this specific fabric because it is a chambray and it's not very heavy this is the zipper that I'm going to use now what comes next is super simple here you have that notch that I marked on my pattern and that is supposed to be right underneath where the zipper stop would reach so that can depend on the length of your zipper from this waist edge down to that notch we're going to sew with a long stitch length the longest on your machine because this is just a temporary stitch it will be removed later then we reinforce and from here all the way down the center front of the skirt we're going to sew with a straight stitch before doing anything i serged both edges separately this curved edge was serged really carefully around that curve and i'm going to be pressing the seam allowance open that means i don't need to snip into here so I'm sewing along the edge of the interfacing because that is actually the seam line, that is the seam allowance for this pattern. Okay, now here I reduce my stitch length to the normal one that you use. I'll reinforce here, back tuck. And now keep going down. Okay, now what you would do to the seam is go to the iron and press it open very neatly. Now I'll show you the alternative with purple pants. There it's different because underneath here you'll see a crotch curve and it's really short right here. But the essence is the same, there will be a little snip into there and then the seam allowance is pressed together to one side towards the left. And you could do that method on your skirt if you're doing a traditional denim skirt and you want to top stitch, do a rubble, double row of top stitching there. Uh, having the seam allowance together to one side would be more appropriate. In this case, this is a more delicate type of skirt, so I'm not looking to do that. And also, I get to keep everything intact here without snipping and just pressing open. So let's see the other way. I have both front legs right sides together, this curve aligned right there, both of these are interfaced on this area and up here on the waist you'll find a notch, right there you'll find a dot. I drew the line there to help me sew properly and then from here it has half an inch seam allowance right there. So what needs to be done now is from here up to the dot a basting stitch, long stitch length because that will be removed later. Once you get to the dot you reinforce back tack and shorten your stitch length to normal and continue that right there. The next step is one that always makes me very nervous and it's cutting from that corner up to the dot but not through it. These two we can serge the edges of both of these. You can see it's going to end up like that and it's impossible to serge up to there so this area here I like to finish it by hand right there. And then this, you can serge it together like that. And you also have a raw area that I like to finish by hand. I'll go ahead and serge what I can and finish this bit by hand there as well. I've just serged it here and you can see that when you finish, there's a raw area there. I leave these hanging. And this is what I'm going to use to hand sew that bit there closed as much as I can. Okay, now I can push this out of the way and serge this little front crotch right there. I finished those raw edges with the same serger thread tails that I had left over so I'm quite confident that this is going to be safe in this area and on the top there this short seam allowance here needs to be pressed to the left okay what happens next is the exact same thing that you saw with the purple pants with the exception here that I have a really clean area and the seam allowance is open there's no snip you know you had to snip to be able to press the seam allowance of the crotch to the left that's not happening with this skirt. So I have an L for left and an R for right. This is the wearer side. If I place this on my tummy, this is on my left. This is my left hand. This is my right hand. And here on the right side of this facing, you can see from the seam line, I've marked a line that's three eighths away from it right there. So that line is going from here all the way down to there. That original notch that marked where the zipper stop would be was marked here. I've just transferred it over there so I can see it. And now I'm going to take my zipper and put it right sides together with the facing, which means that the pull is going to be touching this. 
I'm going to have the wrong side of the zipper up and I'm going to align the middle of these teeth right on top of this red line right there. So I'm going to do this carefully. Also, this zipper stop is going to be about a quarter of an inch above this line. This is so we have enough space later when we top stitch and we don't bump into that zipper stop. And you just now have to look, pin the zipper only to the facing, not to this part of the garment. And just keep looking like this, that the middle is right on top of that line. Zippers are pretty unflexible, so it's not like it's going to fold sideways or anything. So this is not a hard step. Just look what's underneath and pin. Now you know I'm going to hand base this because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to trust these pins too much. So that's the zipper pin to the right facing right there. I'm just gonna give it a quick hand base, and then we're gonna sew this as close to the edge of the teeth as we can with the zipper presser foot. I've got the most commonly used zipper presser foot, and I'm going to use this side right here. I'll just put this on there, and I've moved my needle to the left, so it's not in the original centered position. It's to the left. And that's so I can get closer to the zipper teeth as I can. Now I'm going to be placing the edge of the zipper presser foot along the edge right there. And make sure you just have your facing and your zipper, you're not catching any of this. This has to be moved out of the way. Okay, after I'm past that, I'm going to be better. <laughs> but that edge is touching the edge of the zipper teeth. And you can sew this all the way down if you want. Take this zipper that is still loose and just flip this everything out of the way. Everything under the left. So that's what you have there, the facing and the zipper here by itself. Now we need to edge stitch from there all the way down to the bottom. So we're going to be sewing right on the edge there. And for this I'm going to put the zipper press foot to the other side. Move my needle to its original centered position so it can go through that little opening there. Now if you look carefully, you can see that red line I had drawn with my friction pen. So whatever method you use to draw that, eight, that line that was 3 eighths away from that seam, make sure that it can come off. If it's permanent, it will be seen. <laughs> okay, so at this point we've sewn the right zipper tape to the right side of the facing. Then we flipped it and then we edge stitched that down there. And that's how this lies right here. This is how it looks when it's flat. But this is not the way you're meant to sew the left side. Take this that's still loose and just bring this over. So you're meant to have this seam allowance come over this seam allowance and they are actually together right here to the left. I'm not gonna be doing anything special. I'm just gonna press this open and I'll just have that little fold there. I really don't wanna snip into here so I can have this fully open. So that's how it's gonna be. You can see that the facing of the left side is really small here now and my letter that I've written is almost covered. But just make sure that's correct. You do need to have the seam allowance come to one side. So I'm just going to pin that. I'm not going to be doing anything with the right side. Now I'm going to sew the left zipper tape onto the left facing right there. So just as I did with the other side, I'm just going to give it a few pins, hand baste it, and then sew it. Although this time I don't need to sew this right on the edge like I did on this side. I can sew it a little further away. But I'm trying to stay away from the pins for the zipper and just do some quick hand basting. Now remember the size of our facings were the same. But you can see clearly that the zipper is actually shifted towards the left side of the body. And that's how it's supposed to be. So this is not a centered zipper insertion at all. I just want to point out again that this is what you're supposed to see here. You're not supposed to see this completely flat there. If you do see it flat, fix it because you're going to get it all wrong if you don't have both seam allowances going to the left right there. If you're sewing pants, it's the same. You would have your crotch curve right here to the left. So just take your facing and your zipper, push this underneath the right side. I'm going to be sewing from here down. It's just easier that way. This time I'm not pushing the needle to the left. I'm just leaving it in the center position. And I'm just going to sew this, keeping the edge of the presser foot against the edge of the teeth. Okay, so at this point we have sewn the zipper to the right facing here to the left facing and now we can flip our skirt to the other side onto the right side. What I'm going to do now is top stitch. So from this seam I've measured an inch this way. Now it could be a little wider maybe an inch and a quarter or an inch and an eighth. I'm just doing an inch because this is a delicate type of skirt and 
I'm using a small zipper so it doesn't really make that much of a difference so from there I measured an inch all the way down remember that notch there that will be a reference up to where my top stitching will be remember inside my zipper stop is about a quarter of an inch higher and I can feel it right there it's higher so when I go around this curve I'm not going to catch all that metal right there so from here I've just drawn a slight curve there with my friction pen you can barely see it but I can see it and I'm going to try and do that as neat as I can because I'll be sewing over all that embroidery and just to keep this in place without moving I'm also going to give it a quick hand baste pretty far away from where I'm going to sew but just so I make sure everything is correct and nothing is moving under there so I'm sewing on the zipper tape there zipper tape is at the bottom of where I'm sewing right now now here on the curve I go really slowly I can feel where the zipper stop is right there and when I reach the seam there I'm going to back stitch now if you were sewing jeans or you just wanted a bit more detail on your zipper you would do the second row of parallel stitching right there and I usually use a quarter of an inch from the edge right there to do that and what I do for that is I take this off and I just use my regular presser foot and put it there I use my stitch that I already did as a guide to sew the second row even down there so because now we're further away from the zipper the normal presser foot would work to do that and you can do that if you're doing jeans or if you're making like a linen skirt with a lot of top stitching okay now that that's sewn we can open this seam remember we had done a basting stitch up to that notch there and then from here it's reinforced and then you have a short stitch length so removing this should be pretty easy just come in here and grab any of these stitches and everything will start opening up here you can take one thread and sometimes this works where you just pull it and everything just comes flying out in one go and then voila it's open <laughs> when you wear your zipper this is going to be flat it's not going to be gaping and opening and you can see that the zipper is pushed in there so it won't be seen and that's why we had to draw that seam allowance from the edge 3 8 and sew it shift it over to the left side this is the left wearer's side so it's not centered right here you, should, you shouldn't want to see the zipper right here on the edge because when you wear it, it's going to gape and you're going to see zipper teeth there so that's not a nice look so there should always be a type of overlap down here and that's why you have the seam allowance going to the same side here I'm going to press everything open up to there and then just have a little fold it's not going to disturb me I really don't want to snip into there so this can be done super easy the last step that needs to happen now is to sew the shield looking at this from the wrong side of the garment here we have the right here we have the left we have the long edge here in the center and then that curve sort of follows that curve although it's not always going to be exact meet this edge here that is the one that has the seam to the edge of the zipper just like a reference this way we're going to be sure it's going to cover it so now we're going to flip this to the right side what we need to do now is top stitch again where we did that edge stitching before remember right there we're going to sew right on top again and that's going to hold the shield in place so i'd put those pins there but i'm actually going to put them on this side now now that i know where this is going to be placed remember we want to cover that zipper tape that's why i'm aligning the edge of the shield to the tape there we can open this actually we might have better access this way we won't be able to sew it all the way down but as, as much as we can the goal is to just fix this shield in place so i'm going to use my presser foot again just flip it to this side and i'm going to be edge stitching right on top of where i already did so it's not noticeable there is our zipper already sewn this is just got one stitch you can do two if you want to parallel to that the shield is coming from behind there when we wear the garment the shield will cover the actual zipper so the zipper the metal all that business is never going to touch our skin it's nicely covered there and there and that's it really later on when you sew your waistband your waistband will reach up to there so make sure you look at what pattern you're using you might need to lengthen this area here and this is on the right side on the wearer's right side so the right waistband this is how you would wear it this side wouldn't be modified the left side but 
just in case you might want to make your right side waistband a little longer here to account for this shield if your pattern didn't have a zipper accounted for so I left you with a zipper that was completed. I'm not going to show you the full completed garment in this video. This video is just about the zipper technique, but you see the skirt made very, very soon, very soon in a few hours. So I'll just show you the center here of my garment. You can see my waistband has been sewn on and all the top of the zipper is really, really neat. You can see I just did one stitching line to hold this together. It's curved right there. Now, if you're doing jeans or if you just want to do a lot of top stitching, you're working on a solid, maybe a cotton twill, a linen, a denim, you, want, you might want to do two rows because it turns out a bit decorative as well. Same as sewing the center front of your garment. In this case, it's a skirt. You might want to top stitch that seam, but I'm not doing that here. You can see that the waistband reaches right up to the stop right there of the zipper. And then I had just zipper tape there on the top. And you can see that the waistband catches the shield that is on the right side, right there. There's the edge stitching, as well as catching the zipper shield on the other side. It's very, very neat. It's black, I still hope you can see it. <laughs> I used cotton for the shield and as well as for the inner waistband. So it's really nice and soft inside. And on the left side, that's how it looks. You can see the zipper tape there. But when you wear it, it's not gonna touch you. You'll never have any metal touching your abdomen or anything like that. And on the inside, it looks extremely neat. It's very, very nice. I really enjoy this technique. And I have the center front pressed open up to there. And then I have a little fold to avoid that dreaded snip. You know, I will snip when I have to, but I try not to snip because I always remember when I put a garment on that has a snip somewhere, I always remember and I feel that there's an area that is weaker in the garment if there's a snip there. Maybe on a skirt, this won't be such a high stress area, but on a crotch on pants, I do feel that it's a high stress area. So I did show you in that example of the purple pants where I snipped and I reinforced all those row areas really, really well with the leftover serger threads. That was a little snippet I've shown you there of the upland trousers from each to stitch. It's a really, really nice way to put on a zipper. And now I'm showing you how you can adapt and do this type of zipper on anything that you want. You know, you can add this on children's clothing, anything you want. Always remember that when I show you measurements of pattern pieces I'm creating, they are only ideas and guidelines. You can use the same ones I'm showing you. They are going to work, but then there's also things that you can adapt. In this case, you can make your little pieces longer if you want to use a longer zipper. Or in the case that you do have a longer zipper but want to use these measurements, you can align the middle of the zipper stop to the line that I've shown you and just have an excess of zipper length on the top where you can trim away and then take out some teeth with some pliers which is something I really enjoy doing, I don't mind and this is the length that I like for zippers so from the waist down to the notch, six and a half inches is sort of what I like if I have a zipper that's longer I'll probably trim it away off at the top and you might have seen me do that before don't think that you have to be limited by the zippers that you have, you know, you can, always, you can always trim them away if they're longer. I hope you find this technique doable. I hope you get motivated to try something different, to just try a new technique. This way is so much easier than others that I've done in the past. You'll be able to do it. You'll be done in no time. Once you do it over and over, it'll be one less thing that can create stress for you when you're trying to improve your skills and you know, you've set goals for yourself and you can finally start taking them off. Now you can put on a fly zipper onto anything you want with a really easy technique. And you'll see this garment tomorrow, plus some other things. Might be the feature Friday pattern for Love Notions. Don't tell anyone I told you. So I will see you again very soon. Bye.